I would introduce my daughter, Asia Oishi. Hi. Um, so this is the third one of a series of four poems, and it's called Hiroshima Day. They read off a list of the newly dead survivors of the bomb and put the names inside a cenotaph with flowers in all solemnity. They spoke for peace and ending wars and dismantling the warheads hanging over all of us. And my friend Shigeko-san, who 60 years before was just starting to clean the streets on a hot, bright morning, was sitting next to me without her son and family and she was trying to think of him and them and everything but. At 8.15, they rang a bell and we all stood in the sunshine and prayed at once and either thought about 60 years ago and 600 meters above our heads where something evil fell or we tried not to. And we sat down after three long tolls and the children spoke shrilly and vowed us all to peace and then they released 1,000 doves into the sunshine and the thick, wet air. Cicadas applauded and screamed in the trees, and two dragonflies made their rounds above the crowd, stopping carefully over each and every head, like tiny popes giving their blessing, or tiny souls scanning our faces for signs of resolve or remorse. Shigeko-san watched and wiped the sweat from her face with the purple-flowered cloth, and what was she thinking as she fanned and fanned and listened with her native ears wide open? She was young once, with a normal face, and she played games with her middle school friends, even though there was a war going on. She knew all the popular songs. As the government officials paid their respects and made their speeches, the proud, straight old man in front of us, wrinkled as Japan itself, folded at the waist, and I saw his shoulders shaking as he sobbed into his handkerchief. I looked at my hands that have only ever been long and firm and formed as unscarred hands are formed, and I realized I was surrounded by elderly people who spent their youth in the middle of war, who knew what that was. And the kindest woman I know was sitting there all the while with the skin of her thigh grafted onto her jaw to give her a semblance of chin. And I thought of where she must have been at 8.15, August 6th, 1945. She would have been close to here, only a kilometer and a half away, as she watched the plane fly overhead, and she saw the little white parachute drift down for a moment and then the sky ruptured and her beautiful summer day was suddenly gone. And she found herself after the flash and the winds under a blanket of radioactive ash. At 8.14, she was a perfect and happy 13-year-old girl. But by 8.16, her face had already burned away and her hands were contorted like claws. For five days, she lay in the rubble, clinging to life and saying her name over and over with no food, no water, as all the ghosts paraded by. Until her father came through the wasteland and pulled back her hair to try to find her face, and her scalp came off in his hands. Sixty years later, her story emerges one small sentence at a time, although hell showed up to change her all at once and she's had to carry it ever since. Shigeko-san, beloved of every animal and child who meets her, sat beside me against all odds in the sweltering heat of August without shedding a tear, patiently cooling herself as best she could in her wide purple hat. And her smile proves everyone wrong, and she is the most gentle person and laughs like a schoolgirl with perfect fingers. And 60 years later, in Hiroshima, green leaves are everywhere, and everything's moving, and everywhere you look, there's life.